On today's wrestling news, Roman Reigns shoots on The Undertaker. A former Universal Champion returns. A huge match on WWE Backstage. <laughs> And another even bigger match has been announced for TakeOver. Are you ready? Are you ready for the news time? Yes, welcome to the Saturday News. My name is Phil James and I'm joined as ever by Gareth Morgan to talk about all things wrestling on this fine Saturday morning. But before we get going, make sure to subscribe to the channel, uh, like the video, comment down below what you think of all of today's stories and links are in the description to timestamps of each individual story. But before the, before the first story of the day is Roman Reigns shooting on The Undertaker. Yes, he's replied to the comments that have been, well, everywhere about The Undertaker saying how soft the current WWE uh, stars and product is. Uh, so Roman Reigns has been speaking on the Sports Illustrated Media podcast and he, I've got a lot to get through, so there's a few quotes in here. It's quite a good little interview, actually. Uh, he basically says that uh, we do the same job and it's not like bumps have got any harder or any worse. And he goes on to talk about uh, how the matches have changed and how moves have changed, like how drop kicks used to be able to be a finish, but now it's, it's kind of like just like the second move you do in a match. And they're a lot more physical now in the way that they have to present their matches in that like time has moved on so much that uh, they have to do so much more in the matches than what people used to be able to get away with. And he goes on to address Taker directly, just saying that it's strange. He really feels like he missed Moke because uh, Mark is a really good guy. He's very knowledgeable. He's obviously has a ton of respect for the business. And then my favorite quote of all of this is he says, Goldberg is just Goldberg, who cares? <laughs> Fantastic, completely shut down Goldberg there. Um, but then he goes on and he's saying, he's talking about these guns and knives in the locker room. Come on guys, you guys travel just like we did. Did you really get that stuff through security? TSA was just letting it all happen back then. Uh, which is a fair point, to be honest. Like, how did they get those things through security? Um, he goes on to talk about the video games thing directly, he's talking about how some guys will play video games backstage, but it's guys like The New Day who are just phenomenally talented. and. Um, there's other guys who have to put a lot of work into it and Roman Reigns is one of those guys he, when he goes to work he has to switch his mind on to work and be constantly on to the point where when he gets home his wife has to tell him to like okay turn off now like you're at home um, but he's uh, basically rounds it up by saying that so yeah I don't always think there's room for video games in the locker room but when we're running our regular touring system and it's a live event and there's nowhere to go and you've been kicked out of the hotel because you couldn't get the late checkout you've already hit the gym and you've picked up your food and you're sitting in the locker room with nothing to do he'd rather his guys be playing video games than breaking into a bag of some sort um, and yeah he basically ends it by talking about how easy it was to be in the Attitude Era and how much harder it is to work to PG because they had so much more freedom and now they've got limitations on the things that they have to do. Like think how easy his current character would be if he could just go around drinking beers and smoking all the time. And then he has a great line about The Undertaker. He just says, I think it was just like a retired guy trying to sound like a gangster. <laughs> I love that that sign off because it felt like he was be, he was like walking a line through most of it, just defending his locker room, his locker room leader. It's what you expect of him, really, yeah. for the most part. And he did, he did it admirably well throughout all that interview. And then just at the end, it's just a little shot. Just sounds like he's trying to be a little gangster. Bless him, he's he's, yeah. he's still doing this. Like you can tell, Reigns has got a lot of respect for Taker. He's paved the way, and Absolutely, most yeah. of the people in the back will obviously have that respect as well. So he's kind of he's trying to cover him. If anything, he's trying to back up and say he's probably meant this. To be fair, like he's yeah. he's uh, he's not the kind of guy who's just going to go out of his way to disrespect anybody like he, he loves this business but i think it this was a very well a very calculated interview um in the fact that he, he, he talks about the the differences between the the two cultures the two different eras and he's right and i'd, I'd prefer my wrestlers right now in the current situation where they're not getting smacked in the face by steel chairs every week that there's not an abundance of drugs and knives and guns from the sounds of things which even yeah. raise says it sounds like something quite odd how would you get that through security i, I prefer my wrestlers now now to if they are bored and they, they have not been able to get that early check out and they've done the gym they've got the food what's wrong with sitting down and having a few games of fifa nothing wrong with that like that just it keeps them out of trouble it keeps them entertained these human beings are on the road they're doing the thing not a problem with that in the world and it seems like the tribal chief the head of the table hasn't got a problem with it so neither should he 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he does go in as well to say that、uh, he hopes that some of the younger guys don't fall into the trap of thinking that they can just get away with playing video games backstage、uh, because some guys like the New Day do. The levels there are very, very different, and when the New Day hit the ring, like they're the most professional guys you could possibly imagine.、Um, so yeah, he's, he's not like saying everyone should just goof off backstage. Like it's work, and there is work to be done. But you know, there's a time for everything, and. Like you say, don't really want them to be dipping into a bag of something to get through their days. Yeah, that's a good point. But speaking of there being a time for everything, last night was the time for a big old return of a former Universal Champion, Phil. Because of all people, Braun Strowman, who I've been mocking and mimicking with my beard over the last couple of weeks, as you can tell,、um, he he just he just popped up on SmackDown in the middle of a ten-man tag team match, which was originally AJ Styles versus Daniel Bryan. That escalated and then escalated and then escalated into this massive ten-man war where people just kept coming. And they were like, "I want to be in this match." Yeah, me too. Yeah, me too. It was weird. And then at the end of it, Strowman came out. Was the big surprise, obliterated everyone, and then seemingly has pretty much announced himself in the Royal Rumble. That's that's the the rumors going around right now. It's odd because surely you would have just. Save the surprise, similar to the Edge thing. Saved it for the Rumble. Does this mean that we've got an even bigger surprise coming on Sunday? Probably not. This is just <laughs> weird. Yeah,、um, yeah, they're doing this recently. I don't know why. It's like it's it's Sunday. Just save it. But I guess if they're trying to make him look strong, because he's obviously not going to win the Royal Rumble. And but you could have just done that by having him throw a bunch of guys out of the Rumble. I don't know. But fine, Von Strowm is back. I guess. Hopefully they save some things for the Royal Rumble. But speaking of slightly ruining things at the Royal Rumble,、uh, WWE Backstage is coming for a special one-off episode as like a Royal Rumble preview episode. And originally they said that they were going to have, they were going to announce, sorry, the,、uh, who was going to be number one and two in the Women's Royal Rumble and who was going to be number thirty in the Men's Royal Rumble. Now I'm not sure if they've gone back on that and or if this is in addition to that. Uh, but they're going to have a huge, huge match of Tamina versus Natalia to see who will be number thirty in the women's Royal Rumble match.、Um, I literally paused SmackDown as this <laughs> happened, Phil, and just vented audible frustration at a moment. So yeah, so possibly we're still going to get to find out who's going to be number one and two and thirty in the、uh, in the the men's as well. It's they just give like number thirty spot as well. That should always be a surprise. Like that's just it's the last chance you get. It's the last big pop of the entrances. Don't just give everything away, especially when it's between Tamina and Natalia. Like Sophie's choice, nobody wants either. I guess maybe if Tamina wins, you can probably be guaranteed that she's going to get beaten up on her way to the ring for the match or something. I was going to say like it, this does stink of oh big swerve, someone's going to get attacked on the way down to the ring. If that happens, great. I, I love that when it happened. Was it 2019 when you had the Becky Lynch one and、yeah. the, the Nia Jax one on our truth? Like yeah, they're great. But if if not, then Mmm, mmm, aggression bubbling up within me. So I'm just going to stop. I'm going to go to to brighter, brighter news. It's something I'm very excited about. It's a, a match that's also been announced、uh, coming in the in the next couple of weeks. It is the first takeover on Valentine's Day, which they need to call Valentine Valentine's Day Massacre. The NXT takeover, and they have to call it that. They just it's just rude not to.、Uh, we've had an announcement, which is there's going to be a triple threat for the NXT Women's Championship. It's going to be Io Shirai defending the belt against Tony Storm and Mercedes Martinez. If you watched NXT ups and Downs this week. I literally said, just book this match. Don't ask any questions. Just give it to us, and we'll be happy for the rest of the next ten million years. It's happened. Oh, I'm so giddy about this match. It's just the, the chemistry. It's evolving. It. Tony Storm's look like a badass. Mercedes Martinez is just a tank, and Io Shirai's the genius of the sky. If you can't tell, Phil, I'm very hyped for this match. Yeah, I've noticed.、Uh, yeah, this is great. It's it's got everything in there, really, and. I think Mercedes Martinez was almost in retribution. Well, she was for a bit. That was the best decision she's ever made, getting out of that group. Because <laughs> now look where she is. It's retribution for escaping retribution, is what it is. Indeed.
Uh, finally, on today's news, Bill Goldberg was recently speaking with Soundsphere magazine. Um, I've got a couple of little quotes from it because uh, he was just talking about this. It's one bit that just made me chuckle. He was asked who he would like to win the Royal Rumble if he beats Drew McIntyre. So who would he want to go on and face at WrestleMania? And he said, wow, that's an interesting question. You know, I'm going to plead the fifth and just say I don't care. That's yeah. That's that's <laughs> please defend. I'm not anyone, watching the product. Bless him. He's got a lot on, right? <laughs> yes. Uh, he's head footed a lot of doors. Uh, but he was also asked if there are any younger talent that he thinks will be massive stars in the future, and he said, "I mean, the usual suspects: Drew McIntyre." Obviously, that's not the only person he could think of. Uh, Keith Lee and Ricochet. And he said he's always been a huge fan of Finn Balor. So an interesting four choices from Goldberg. But it made me wonder, what are your four choices for the future of WWE? Ooh, that's a good one. All right. Um, I, I, quickly, I do find it very funny that you said the usual suspects about Keith Lee and Ricochet because WWE know. Creative don't see them as the <laughs> usual suspects. So fingers crossed on that one going forward. Goldberg said it. The man said it. Uh, if, if I had to, yeah, if you had a gun to my head, I'd probably go Bianca Belair. Just unbelievable. Again, watched her on SmackDown this week. She looked like an absolute star. Uh, she will yeah, be I going forward. I, I agree with Goldberg on Ricochet. I think he's just there. He's just on tap potential in that ring just to be a main event just body popping insane person uh, Big E just a, a, an absolute tank of charisma and he can he can go in the ring he's brilliant I think this Intercontinental Championship runs like a prelude to what he could do with the world title and then a little bit of a left wing uh, choice from NXT I want to go Bronson Reed because I think he's been outstanding. Every time I've seen him in the ring over the last couple of weeks since he's sort of returned to NXT recently after a bit of time off, he's looked like a force of nature. And he's somebody who can really deliver that power game in the ring. He's, he, he's agile for a big dude as well. And I just think he's a little bit different to what we've got on the main roster right now. I think when he does eventually get his call up, he'll, he'll be someone to watch. Interesting. Um, yeah, I agree with all of that. Apart from Ricochet, unfortunately, I don't see it in WWE. I see it elsewhere, 100%. He's absolutely amazing, but I don't think WWE see him as that top level. Uh, I was tempted to just say all of the Undisputed Era, uh, but yeah. I'd just go with Adam Cole instead because Adam Cole, obviously, Keith Lee, completely agree with. So much upside. Uh, there's just, yeah, a world of stuff they can do with him. Um, Biggie, where well, I had him on my list as well, but my other one was Dominic Mysterio, just because he's shown, he's been absolutely amazing and he's only like, what, five matches into his career not just WWE career uh, so yeah Dominic Mysterio I think there's so much upside there and he's, he's gonna be a star he had a very good match on Smackdown against uh, the the person who just keeps randomly delivering good matches right now King Corbin yeah crazy yeah. Um, but yeah on to your Twitter questions and the first one comes from Mark Lee Willis who says morning to you Saturday main event Magnificos uh, with Goldberg's comments on present-day talent being soft do you think WWE are using Taker's comments and creating a work angle to build upon the little storyline between Bill and Drew? It'd be a very wise decision to do that because everyone likes that blurring of the lines, don't they? And it's, it's something mm -hmm. that's been a massive talking point throughout the internet wrestling community over the last week. So I don't think it was necessarily the plan. It's not been, I don't think Vince McMahon's been there and take his ear going, oh, when you go on Joe Rogan, say this and we'll use it. It's not yeah. that. It's just that it's a reactionary uh, Me method, let's say, uh, a measure that they've, been, that they've used going forward. And I think it, it's definitely added a bit more heat to this match. So it's worked. Yeah, totally. If that is the fact, I mean, it's a great idea, but it gives WWE a hell of a lot of credit, and I'm not sure I'm ready to give them that much credit, especially on Raw. Um, hmm. But yeah, it's perfect to jump on. If they saw how much heat those Undertaker comments were getting online, if they saw an opportunity to have Goldberg jump on that and then use it in this storyline, it's it's absolutely perfect. It's just ready, built in, creative for you. Uh, it's just whether I give WWE enough credit to actually think of it. <laughs> no, it's safe just to never do that. Yeah. Uh, the next question comes from Mark Smith, who says, what mid-card match would you like to see at WrestleMania 37? Personally, he'd like Shinsuke versus Cesaro. Ooh, that's a good shout, actually, because that'd be quite nice to see the team turning each other. Um, I saw on the What Culture Wrestling account, I think as they were following SmackDown last night, uh, the talk of Shinsuke against Sami Zayn running that back match, uh, that match back. It's Saturday morning, my brain is just fudge. So running that match back from TakeOver when Shinsuke first arrived on the scene, running that back at Mania 37, having the roles 
not necessarily reversed, but changed and altered since that first match at TakeOver, which was insane. It was so good. Go back and watch that if you can, just to treat yourself. If that happened yeah. now, I think it'd be perfect for both guys. They're in a really cool position at this point. Yeah, totally. I'm down with that. Cesaro versus Shinsuke on a WrestleMania stage would be absolutely amazing. I'd throw in Sami Zayn, make it a triple threat. Maybe throw in uh, Big E, make it a fatal four-way uh, for that IC championship. I'd be down with any of that. I mean, the mid-card scene on SmackDown is absolutely incredible. Like, putting Big E and Apollo Crews in a huge spot on WrestleMania would be amazing as well. Like, any, any of this, just combine any of those people into any match, and I think it would be absolute gold. Um, but yeah, that was the Saturday news. Thank you very much for watching. If you want, you can follow us all on Twitter. You can follow uh, what, everyone at What Culture at What Culture WWE. Uh, you can follow me at Film My Chambers, and you can follow Gareth at G Morgan zero four. And yeah, like I say, subscribe to the channel, like the video, comment down below what you think of all of today's stories, especially what your four future WWE stars are. Um, let us know what we want to know. Uh, but most importantly. Have yourselves a bloody good day. Bye. Bye.